North Korea may be one of the most isolated countries in the world, but recently the UN sent a top official there. The historic visit took place shortly after China sent a top envoy. Now, we're hearing that new offer for talks from Rex Tillerson. So, what impact can diplomacy have on the nuclear standoff? Well, here's my conversation with John Park. He's a director of the Korea Working Group at the Harvard Kennedy School. Well, Christy, the hope is that these type of contacts will build towards a momentum where the North Korean side would engage in at least preliminary talks. At the current stage, we see the ratcheting up of tensions, North Korea continuing with its testing, the U.S., Japan, South Korea increasing on the military pressure. So these are important efforts, but they will take time. And the question is, do we have enough time? Now, Trump's U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley recently urged the world to sever ties with North Korea. Um, what is the purpose of that? And should the U.S. pivot to engagement and, and diplomacy? Well, there, there is an effort to increase all types of pressure. Under maximum pressure, we have military pressure, we have economic pressure, and we have political pressure. But with respect to these efforts, if you look at the North Korean development and how advanced the stage is right now, you have to wonder if these type of measures are too late. If uh, they had been applied in a different time earlier in the program, they may have had a different type of effect. But with respect to what's left, if you look at the different diplomatic overtures, the bottom line is North Korea has shown very little interest. Uh, they are keen on developing and acquiring this overall capability of nuclear-armed ICBMs. And at that point, we're waiting to see if they will be engaged in some type of negotiations or offer some indication that they are willing to talk. But right now, the focus on the North Korean side appears to be making more advancements towards uh, total acquisition. There are different types of pressure that can be applied on North Korea. You mentioned economic pressure or sanctions. There are reports out there that a number of nations are, are still not abiding by U.N. sanctions. They're violating sanctions. Could you comment on that reporting and just how effective is this type of pressure anyway? Sure. So the latest report identifies 49 countries that have not been as effective in implementing these type of sanctions. But we have to look again at what the goal is for these type of sanctions. Sanctions at the end of the day is a tool, is a policy tool. Uh, we're not seeing the contours of a very specific plan in which it's going to be applied. If, however, reading the tea leaves, the goal is to North Korea back to the nuclear uh, discussions uh, table. We're looking at a type of phenomenon right now where North Korea is focused on the development side of things and they're less interested in any of the discussions at this particular point in time. And then there's military pressure. Earlier this month, we had those joint U.S.-South Korean military drills this week. You have joint U.S.-Japanese-South Korean military exercises. Um, does this just raise the temperature even higher? Well, we are concerned that with this type of deployment, we can understand the purpose behind it. But with respect to what's happening with these increased uh, military deployments, the elevated uh, tempo in terms of operations and exercises, there is elevated also the chance of miscalculation, inadvertent escalation. Uh, so this is something that as we see these deployments, as we see these increased military exercises, uh, the hope is that there is the type of signaling to make sure that there's a reduction of uh, possibility of inadvertent escalation. And your thoughts on the state of play with North Korea as we head into 2018, because, wow, this has been quite a year. 2017, this almost vicious cycle of never-ending weapons tests by North Korea, followed by condemnation and then confrontation, only to begin the cycle again. Um, what is the outlook going to be for next year? I think what we're going to see is an increasing tempo on both sides, both the North Korean on one side and the U.S., South Korea, Japan on the other. But one of the key things is that as we see these tests and then usual responses, uh, international condemnation, usually a U.N. Uh, Security Council resolution and then more sanctions, what's different is below the surface. We're seeing the type of military preparations we haven't seen before. And if you look at the warnings coming out of Washington, that really it's Kim Jong-un and his activities that is a catalyst for these type of activities. Uh, 2018 will be a, a year where we hope this isn't the case, but the pressure point of North Korea continuing the testing, the United States and the other countries having this type of military preparation response, you get the image of two trains on a course towards collision. So we're hoping that these diplomatic overtures by the UN and other countries hopefully can slow it down. Right now, there's a proposal on the table for a pause for pause uh, for the purpose of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. Hopefully that pause can happen, number one, and number two, hopefully that pause can last a little longer.